Hello. Today, I will briefly review holy model and implement it with Python. First, uh, let me open a Google Collab. So I'm going to use Chrome browser. And then you can type here at the Chrome browser, Collab dot research dot google dot com slash hashtag create equals new and it will load collab and then I'll start program here. Let me magnify the screen. Okay, I think that is enough. So first, let me briefly review what is a holy model. So holy model, uh, basically holy model is, suppose we have initial interest rate like R0. Suppose we have initial interest rate like uh, R0 which is initial interest rate. And then let's say this is initial rate, initial rate. Next. Okay, so it is the initial rate and then Suppose we have two possibility, interest rate going up and the interest rate going down. So let's see, uh, first interest in going down. RT, let's say RD is uh, down interest rate, so RD, equals R0 plus M dot DT. And then we have stochastic term. So minus because it's go down. So sigma. And then uh, we have Sigma and we have time basically. Sigma and dt. dt is uh, time. And then we have power of one, two. So it is interest rate going down. In case of interest rate going up, we have RU is basically R on the bar zero initial rate plus the same drift term MTT. And now we have a plus sigma TT to the power of one over half. Sorry. Period. So this is the eh, Calling model, and then we have 50% chance each 50% chance. So, um, R D and R U occurs one half probabilities each. Okay, and then here it is clearly that. Once we have RT, okay, let me write down R, U is simply, so we have a clear relationship between RD and RU. So RU up return is simply RD plus, RD plus, right? We have two times of sigma T, T square root. So two times of, sigma tt and then square root. OK, 
Okay, this is the basically setting for Hoenli model. And then our goal is here to figure out M because given the historical data, we can estimate sigma, which is the volatility. So using historical data of interest rate, we can calculate sigma. And then using bond data, we're gonna calibrate M. So let's do simple coding. Suppose R0 is, right? R0 is initial rate. Suppose R0 is like following the textbook 4991. Okay, R0 is a 0 0.04991, right? And then next, then it is clear that, uh, it is clear how to construct the array. So uh, for simplicity, let's take some initial value about M. So for initial value of the M, let's say it is 0 0.02. Two. So this is just an initial guess. Guess, but we have to calibrate M. And then RD is, now it is clear, RD is R0 plus M DT multiply dt, oh, and then let's assume dt is one quarter, so 0 0.25, so three months. Three months, time interval, dt, and then minus sigma, so we need the sigma, so for sigma, let's say the initial case for sigma is, no, 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 our value for sigma is let's say um, we can pick any number but because it is interest rate let's pick a small number so sigma is like v is 0 0.005 so it is sigma interest rate ie sigma ie interest rate for volatility. It is of course an annualized interest rate volatility. To make it simple, to make it uh, more transparent, let's call it VOL. So then we have VOL multiplied by DT to the power of 0 0.5. Right? And then R on the bar U is then R on the body plus two multiplied by multiplied by four dt to the power of 0 0.5, right? So let's print Rd. Ah, sorry. So in Python, it should be, yeah, double star. Sorry. It is sometimes confusing. So let me do it again. All right. And then print R U looks like this. Yep, and then let's go to the next code. And then now we want to estimate M, basically we want to calibrate M. So in order to do that, we have to import some library. So let's first from scipy, scipy dot optimize. 
optimize. And then here we import F solve. So we wanna solve for M, so we need F solve. Let's see whether it works. Okay, it is fine. And then let's import mass. And then from mass, we are gonna import the function we are gonna use, exponential function and log function and SQRT, okay? Let's save. All right, and then even the initial rate, let's say two period of bond A2 as the bond price such that uh, face value multiplied by EXP minus R0 multiplied by TT multiplied by two, two period bond. So it's a basically price of two periods. So one period is three months. So price of six months bond. Zero coupon bond, right? Zero coupon bond. Zero coupon bond. Okay, suppose we have this data and given this data, uh, we want to estimate the M. Okay, so now it is uh, six months later, right? Six months later, it is the value of a contract. So let's print A2, print A2. So six months GCB. Six months zero coupon bond price is 97.5354. So the contract that pays $100 six months later is traded at around $97.5, right? And we are gonna use this information, okay? So first, <coughs> so this is six months and then it is six months later. So this is the price of bond that pays you $100 six months later. Then we have to think of what's gonna happen three months later. In three months later, we have two possibilities, right? Interest rate either go up or go down. So let's think about what happened. So six months later, we have two possibility, right? We have two possibilities such that N1 equals and one equals the price when interest go up. So, so three months later, now that six months becomes uh, three months bond. So three months later, we receive $100. And then we have to discount it with minus RU. Actually, instead of this one, let me just change it to right, RD and RU because it is obvious. RD and RU, RU, okay. And then RU multiplied by T. And then N2 equal $100 multiplied by EXP minus RD multiplied by DT. Okay, so print and one, which is three months bond, bond with up at up rate, right? This is N1 and then N2, three months bond at down rate. Oh, sorry, it is, uh, it should be N2. Now, okay, the value of a contract that pays you $100 six months later is about $97.5354. Three months later, now this bond becomes either this one or this one, 
right? Because interest rate goes up, three month rate goes up either to this one or this one. So six months become six months bond becomes three months bond three months later. So we have to discount three months later. We have to discount the face value one hundred dollar with three months rate, which is either up rate or down rate, right? So that's why when interest rate goes up, of course, the bond price is 98.5 cent dollar and interest go down, then bond price go up. So 98.69 dollar. So currently the six months, six months bond is this price and three months later, this bond becomes either this one and this one. And then three months later, it becomes 100 dollar, of course, right? So that's the path of the bond price. Now, we can calculate current bond price, right? We can calculate current bond price. So N0, let's call it N0. Then N0 equals now, because both interest, interest go up or go down with 50%, right? So 50% multiplied by N1 plus 50% multiplied by N2, then it is expected of the value, expected of the bond price six months later, no, no, three months later. Then of course it is expected rate three months later. So we have to discount it with three months rate, which is available today. Today is three months rate, which is R0, minus R0 multiplied by DT. Right, then print N0, which is theoretical six months bond price, right? And then we are gonna see N0, right? So our theoretical price is this one currently price of this one and then three months later it becomes either this one and this one and then it becomes hundred but now this is observed bond price so it is observed so we have a gap between the observed six months bond price and our six month bond price right so that is a gap between theoretical bond price and observed bond price so we can calculate a gap, gap equals, gap equals theoretical price N0 minus N0 minus A2, right? And then print N0 minus A2 equal gap. So gap is this one. So our goal is to make zero. Our goal is to make zero such that our theoretical price is exactly the same to observe the price. Then how we can make it zero? Well, we can make it zero by changing M over here, right? By changing uh, this value over here, M. So that's our goal. Then how to do it? Well, so let's try it. So in order to do that, we have to define function, right? We have to define function and then we want to minimize it. So, well, let's define function. So here, before we do that, let's make it clean. So it is 0 0.5 both places. So this is this one and then simply multiply 0 0.5 over here. Okay, then it is, looks better. Okay, so, okay, let's continue. So let's define function, define function for Li1, Li1, okay. And then we put M over here, M, because we want to find the M. And then let's move this one over here.
copy and then paste over here. So we need, we don't need this part. 0 0.5 RU RD, right? And then given this one, we have N1, N2, N0. N0, okay. And then, of course, we need observed bond price, which is observed bond price, this one, A2. A2. And then, N0, okay, gap, we need a gap. Gap is this one. Right. Well, but instead of this gap, we can simply return. We can simply return, return this one. So we are gonna define a function like that. And then let's check it whether we uh, define this function correctly. So let's say Li1 and then we put M equal 0 0.02, then, right, we have, we get the same value. Okay, this one and this one. So if we put M over here, then given this operation, it find the gap between our theoretical price and object price. And then our goal is to find M, find M such that the return value is zero. Okay, then how to do it? Then we can use this F solve function. F solve function. So to use F solve function, okay. So F solve, F solve, F solve, and then we gonna solve this one, and then let's say initial value is zero. 0.02, okay? So here, F solve means that we want to minimize this function and our initial value, this, this is initial guess, so initial guess, so you can put basically any arbitrary number, so let's start from zero and we can solve it. And then we have this one, okay? zero is the uh, very small number. Okay, so F solve, if we solve it, this becomes a very small number. Okay, and then we can plug this one, this is this is a very small number, interesting. This is very small number. Uh, let me change the initial number, initial value. Well, it is the same. So basically, uh, this is the solution. So let's try. So. Let's call this one as M0. And then let's see Li1, M0. Then it is practically zero, right? So the M here, the value we find is basically here, uh, the M, M value where is M, this one, okay. So here, the so gap is this one, but the theoretical, here the theoretical value N0 and object of the bond price are different by this one. But if we input the correct value of this one, M0 over here, so we can put M0, okay. M equal here, M equal M0 correct value is M0. And then we have 
down interest rate, up interest rate, and you can solve it. Right, we have exactly the same number. So, right, we have observed the six months bond price and realized the theoretical six month bond price. So, we just estimate the Hoyle model, Hoyle model. So, M is basically M0, which is the very small number. So, let's say print this one and print M0. Right, so M0 is this one. So we calibrated this value over here. So we are done. We just estimate the Hoyle model. 